Boogie here. What up, y'all? It's a spiritual night tonight. All the bands have been amazing. Holy Shorty MC. Let's hear it for her. Viewer. Now, I heard a spiritual review from a citizen of Greenfield walking by the front door. I went outside to get my records and t-shirts. And Viewer was in the second song. And this dude walked by. He was headed into the Vic. And there was another dude leaning on the parking meter. And he said, Is that, that playing Pink Floyd up in there? Some chick is singing. I said, Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it for Holy Viewer. <laughs> Pink Floyd. And then that other holy band, the duo, the Tomato Heads. <laughs> Arkham Foam and Joshua Perquise. <laughs> Now, I played a show in Worcester with them one time, and they had a spiritual review from a local pimp. This obese local Wormtown dude, wasted, came in during their set, and he says to me, This is like some fucking fruity Boston artsy shit. And Foam was like, Hell yeah. He's right about that. Boston stuff. Me and Foam used to live in Boston together. And then this beautiful woman, old lady, came in and was doing a psychedelic dance to one of my songs. And then at the end of the song, she sat this mystical bracelet on my kneecap. Millie? No joke. Yeah, Millie. Hell yeah. Holy <laughs> Millie. She sat the mystical bracelet on my kneecap. She makes these, it's like beads, and it says like, fuck you, spank me, and then like nice designs too. She sat a mystical, I think it said spank me on my kneecap. And then she did a mystical like curtsy at the end of the song. And the, you know, a big applause and there's silence and the dude goes, it doubles as a cock ring. <laughs> Let me tell you. So, it turns out this holy lady, Millie, she makes these bracelets. And some judges in Worcester, if you go into court and you rock in one of Millie's bracelets, they'll give you a much less sentence just because you're rocking such a spiritual bracelet. And they know that you've been chugging down at the holy shit bar. So they give you a lighter sentence if you rock the bracelet that says spank me to court. And it doubles as a holy cock ring. This first song right here is a mystical uh, instrumental to warm up my fingers, y'all.
temperatures be affecting these strings. Hold on one second. The holy strings were drinking some steam whistles last night. Some steam whistles, eh? Yeah, me and Josh Berquiz taking a holy journey down to Connecticut tomorrow. Hopefully it gets pretty freaky. That's what this next song is about. psychedelic uh, Irish themed vape shop in Glens Falls, New York <laughs> called Plenty of Vapes. <laughs> I got plenty of vapes up in here. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> they got the pimp wearing the big hat and everything. I woke up on the, the second second morning of tour new pulse on the floor of a mystical house and uh, I was getting tossed by a big ass golden retriever <laughs> he was humping me I woke up getting tossed by a big ass golden retriever named Buddy like that movie Air Bud <laughs> I woke up I 
I said, who is humping me? <laughs> I'm laid out on the floor of this strange house. It was a big dog. <laughs> that leads me to, to quote my man Danny Monster Cruz, the greatest line I think he ever wrote. Bestiality is my reality. <laughs> That's a holy saying right there. I kind of agree with him, though. There was these two little dachshunds last night at the show in Montreal. Let me tell you. One was named Pan. I think he's like a sexual god or something like that. I was thinking about all kinds of things. One was named Bill, a strange shrunken golden retriever. <laughs> this is an old tune right here. I haven't played it in a long time. Called Ramblin' Soul. single thing I've ever put out. Even shit that I've never had a copy of, he's got. It. And he compiled this mystical record of a lot of his favorite stuff from early tapes of mine. 
and this dude named Chris Cross, a psychedelic pimp in Boston, put it out. I got mad copies over here, so you should get one if you're interested. Let me read to him real quick, yo. Thanks to everybody up in Loki here. I heard there's 15 people, that's off the chain. Much love to all y'all. Mounds and shit. 
of tobacco, loose, stale, floating around in the apartment. I don't know why. He said, I'm making cigarettes. I said, you could make enough cigarettes for a damn factory in this place. A little trailer. He said, it's time for the squirrels too, boys. We went in the kitchen. We sat down at the table. He began to cook. He began digging into the deep freeze, pulling out different types of meats. Some of them looked real bad, smelling funky. He would cut them open with this big-ass knife, and the smell rancid meat. He said, I don't know what a lot of these are in here, but I know one of them squirrel. We cooking them all, though, boys. We eating big tonight. So he's cutting open these bags. It is smelling putrid up in that place. There's a terrible pizza place in Canada called Pizza Pizza, the worst pizza in the world. Desecrated slice is what me and Foam used to call it. But I was telling this Canadian lady last night how much I disliked it, and she says, that place is ghastly. <laughs> now the smell of the meat was ghastly as a motherfucker. It smelled like a haunted house would smell if it was rotten meat that the house was built out of. <laughs> He puts the meats into a big pan. He starts boiling them up. It is smelling funky up in there. He takes the rice. Now, Johnny Worley is a gourmet cook like you've never seen in your life. Normally, we boil rice. I think that's what you're supposed to do. Put the water in the pot, maybe a little bit of some special butter or something. If you live in a window, you put the weed butter up in there. If you live in a green field, you put a little bit of that holy uh, crystal meth butter up in there. If you live in Turner's Falls, you fucking put a little Yeti powder up in there. Mix with the butter. If you live in Northampton, you put a, a big old uh, big old pile of crackers up in the pot. Um, but you know what I'm saying. He didn't do any of that. He took the rice, threw it in a hot ass pan, and burnt the shit out of it. No water involved. And he threw the burnt rice just on a plate. And that's how Johnny Worley cooks that rice. The stew was a boil, and the smell was putrid as it can be. It was very putrid. He said, Boys, it's ready. I said, Oh, man. Here we go. We shouldn't eat this. It's ruining the rest of the tour for us. We're only two shows in on like a nine show tour. I dogged three enormous bowls. <laughs> the vegetarian homie didn't dog any of it. He was he had the holy blessing. <laughs> My boy Big Willie with an iron stomach dogged three bowls. This guy named Martian dog three bowls. I walked straight out the place the second that the fresh air hit my lungs. I just went, Bleh! holy fire hose of spew, blasted like 30 feet on two neighbors away property. I cleared my body of that nasty, putrid stuff. That holy air just told me it's time to get that out of you. You don't need that chilling up inside. Big Willie with the iron stomach, he was fine, untouched. <laughs> My man Martian got the salmonella. <laughs> he couldn't even play the rest of the tour, just bubbling and sharting and doing all kinds of stuff. He just sat in the van while we rocked, smelling putrid, like Johnny Worley Squirrel Stew. So let me tell you, if you meet a man named Johnny Worley, he offers to take you back to his place and cook some squirrel stew. I advise you to go. <laughs> we all slept on big ass tobacco pillows that night. <laughs> it was a very holy spiritual sleep. Woke up with tobacco up my nose. In every crevasse, it was off the chain. This one's dedicated to Holy Foam and Johnny Worley right here. <laughs>
town in Tennessee. It's a new, relatively new holy song. Fresh air. You 
feeling so healthy and spiritual. It was while 